I'm going to show you how one can use the dynamic cell models to model a specific cell with your students during class. So in this case, the Elodea cell. Here's the Elodea plant, and I've made a wet mount using one of the small leaves from this plant. Put the wet mount on the microscope, and this scope is equipped with a digital camera, so we can view a live image of this particular Elodea leaf. And if you take a look at this live image, which ends up like a low resolution as it's live, you'll see that the chloroplasts are moving around the outside of the cell. And this is cytoplasmic streaming, and actually the entire cytoplasm is moving, but the only colored item that we can see are the chloroplasts. I took one still image of this cell, and it can be seen over on this side of, this, of the monitor. And we're going to use this still image in order to model an LOD cell. Now, in your lab, you won't necessarily have a still image, but your students can pick one cell that they think is interesting looking and choose that and model that cell. Now let's model the LOD cell that we saw on the computer. For that, we're going to need both a membrane and a cell wall. I usually have my students figure out which is which based on their function, which should be thicker. So, um, one thing that's kind of helpful when using both the membrane and the cell wall is to have the magnets near one another. Uh, that way you have less to move around. So, now you can pretend to be the set of skeleton and make your shape of your membrane and cell wall into the shape of the cell that we actually saw. So, the cell that we saw was <clears throat> somewhat rectangular. So I'm going to put some bends on it. And it also seemed to have a little bend out on the side, kind of like that. Then the other thing that we saw inside of our cell were chloroplasts. Now keep in mind you need to put the inner membranes into the outer membrane to assemble your chloroplast. And once that's in, you can put your chloroplasts into the cell. Now students might just stick them anywhere at first. You might need to ask them if they're really in the middle of the cell, and they might be if they're focused on the top or the bottom of the cell. But they can usually focus somewhere in the middle and notice that there's an emptiness in the middle, and then they can move their chloroplasts to where they should, where they actually see them in the cell. And in the cell we were viewing, they're pretty much in these positions, at, in the still image. When students are modeling this, they can go ahead, when there are many hands especially, and show cytoplasmic streaming. So they can show them moving around with two hands. It's kind of tricky. Once your students have been modeling chloroplast uh, streaming, cytoplasmic streaming, they might wonder why this, the chloroplasts never travel across the center of the cell. At this point, it's a good time to bring in the other membrane, the either animal cell membrane or the central vacuole membrane. This, which isn't visible because it's transparent and we haven't stained the cell, it can still take up a significant portion of the cell volume. So as the chloroplasts go around, they might have to go over it in order to keep moving, but they can't go through it because it physically takes up that space. 